Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Retro Handhelds Live podcast. Oh, my gosh. We're back. We're here with me, Thor. And Stubbs. And today we have a very special guest. We're here with Black Seraph, uh, custom firmware and lineage developer. Uh, Seraph, how you doing, man? I'm doing fine. Bird in work as usual. Yeah, yeah, man. What, what are you working on? What you got going on? You're at the moment, busy. I'm trying. To, at yeah. the moment, I'm trying to give the X18s a little refresh. Mm-hmm. I've laid it. I've laid it off for a while, and it's time to go back to the older devices and give them the refresh they much need. Uh, after the X18s, I hope that I can also give the XT and XT Plus a rerun. But the XT Plus is one of my trouble childs. It's <laughs> running on the MT8173, yeah. it was, I think. Yeah. And there's hardly any devices out there that run on the chip. So it's a real pain in the ass to actually get that one running properly. We still yeah, have the HDMI output issues with the 50 hertz output and stuff from years oh, well. back Yeah, that we just well, can't got- put a lid on. You got that power VR chipset in there, so I know it's tough to develop for. And I know that Saturn runs better on the original XD, so it's still worth updating that one, right? Yeah, the original XD is actually the easier one to update here. So I might actually pull that ahead of the XD+. Ooh, Plus. It will it will make a bunch of XD Plus people disgruntled <laughs> because they've been waiting for so long to get an update for that one. Yeah. Oh, are, are we pulling it out? Are you pulling it out? What are you doing? Here Guys, we go. I got an OG XD in today from eBay, hey, a blue nice. one. I saw my red uh-huh. that you, you twisted. My I have my red one, yes. I know. I I used to have a red one, but I've been looking for the blue one for years, and I saw it pop up on eBay the other day, and I was like, without a <gasps> doubt, clicked on it, bought it. Yeah. It's great condition. It has Skeleton's uh, Legacy ROM on it, but uh, it's primed and ready for, for lineage. The blue one was the 16 gigabyte model, wasn't it? Yeah, 16. I think it is 16. Um, Red 64, totally... blue 16, I think. And I think the, black is 32. The black is 32. Um, I need to find GPD Win 2 buttons for this, though. So I put the call out today because PsyOps, <laughs> his store is down and I can't find what? him anywhere. Um, he so he's I not found... on Discord right now? I can't find him on Discord. I don't know where he's at, but I got to huh. find him because he was selling these Win 2 buttons that make this look just gorgeous, uh, oh, as well yeah. as... I need to replace the caps here. They're a little bit worn in, which I yeah. found on a German website this morning. So I ordered, ordered a couple. Um, As for PsyOps, I think he's just busy with real life. Uh, he drops yeah. me a message every once in a while. And from the general twist I'm getting there, it's just, you know, family life and, you know, that kind of stuff. I think he kind of <laughs> dropped out of the whole handheld scene. Well... Let's get into the into the handheld news because it's been a minute and there's actually a lot to catch up on. There um, is. Oh my goodness. So new things are out. I got in the uh, GameSir X3. Mm-hmm. It has a fan on it, which is ridiculous and useless. Uh, you actually <laughs> have to plug this into pa- wall power to use the fan, which completely defeats the purpose of it. And That's I awful. found this thing to be somewhat comfortable, but the X2 is better. So I was going to do a video on this, but uh, I'm just going to wrap it up by saying, nah, nah, <laughs> nah not really. Uh, I have a Kishi V2 on the way. I'm going to compare it to that as well as a, a backbone for Android. I'm, so I'm, I'm interested in the see. Kishi V2. I I don't know, though. I'm, I'm worried about the build quality. That's all. That's yeah, why I haven't I haven't pulled the trigger on that one yet. Yeah. And the Amazon reviews are kind of faltering on it. It's kind of are like they? a three out of four, three out of five device for a lot of people. Uh, they're saying that it feels flimsy, that, uh, it doesn't work with a case on the phone, that, uh, it's nice to have the clicky buttons, but some of mm-hmm. it's a step in the wrong direction. So uh, we'll see. Um, we'll see. also picked up the Ghoulie Cat King Kong Pro 2, which has those hull sensors. So I wanted to see what all the fuss was about. And these joysticks are definitely S tier. So they are beautiful. Check out Retro Game Core's video for that. Did you, uh, this controller. Did you see the news today? about that what was the they're, news about it they're, the they're releasing no no no. they're releasing hall sensor switch joysticks gully kid is no way okay yeah. so not just for people with the switch but for people with an odin as well yeah you'll be able to put those in there so i beautiful. might do a video on that that is beautiful, beautiful indeed yeah i love i love the feel of the controller and these joysticks are just amazing i would put them on any device at this point i've been using <laughs> this as my daily driver for windows gaming and uh, all of my windows retro arch stuff 
Yeah. And it's, it's awesome. And it, I took it to San Diego uh, with my wife last week and we were playing multiplayer on this with the Odin. So this works well on Android and uh, it pairs with switch and all that good stuff. So I recommend, I do recommend this is not just hype. It's a great daily driver that you can use on all your systems. You know, what is not a great daily driver. What the Xbox? What do you controller. got? All right. What do you, what do you think? This thing is not, yeah. it's not fantastic. All right. Why I've, do you have it? Why do you have it right there at the right? Because it, because it feels premium and I've been using it to play mm-hmm. monster hunter rise with my homie. Ah, uh, but for some reason, windows drivers on it are screwed. Mm-hmm. Like I, it's still, it doesn't work right. It doesn't re- even recognize it as an Xbox controller. It just says controller when I, when I connect it. Well, what are your thoughts on the play date? Cause I know you got one of these in now. I do have a play date. There. Well, I was going to ask Seraph when we were getting lineage for the play date. Yeah. You when know, we're getting like, lineage like, on the play date. <laughs> <laughs> that little thing is amazing. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. It wasn't the play date. The one with the little curb on the side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little. <laughs> God. <laughs> Got the little, little cranky doodle. Well, that crank. thing actually works. I didn't know that it thing does. actually did anything. It's, like, it's an it analog does. crank. It's an actual analog crank. It can tell where where it starts and stops. It's great. I no, mean, I I've can't. only I've only seen the actual <laughs> pictures of it. I haven't even looked closely at the chipset or something. What is that thing running? Android. Oh, I don't, it is running right. a modified Android. It is. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean the chipset. Ooh. Any idea? <laughs> Yeah, I can look something. At it. It's like 100 megahertz or something. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's super duper small. OK, 100 also megahertz. Show- Wait a second, 100 megahertz. <laughs> what what Android revision is running on this? <laughs> oh, man. Do we it's know a- this? Let's see. It's a 400 by 240 screen. That's not black backlit. Uh, it's 180 megahertz Cortex M7 with 16 megabytes of RAM and a 32 kilobyte L1 cache. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be jelly bean oh it has to be it has to be <laughs> that's uh yeah it's, it's not gonna win any benchmarks but it's damn cute <laughs> it is super cute although oh, i am the curb did it i am a little disappointed to find out that i have to wait for the games right because i just got mine in right right yeah i don't get timer caught up when, right yeah. i don't get caught up on the game releases like you know i can't get back up to where mm-hmm. you guys are so well, you can sideload if you want. You know, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, and get ahead. Yeah. You know, and you have to be a pirate of games. Well, I mean, it, I already own. bought them. I already bought yeah, them. They're so. your games. You just yeah. want them faster. Are we opening uh, that can of worms? <laughs> sure. We can open any can of worms you want. This is this is the Retro Handhelds podcast. We're just rebels. We're outlaws. We're, we're getting square. philosophical. Is downloading ROM images illegal? Ooh. I say the F word and, and there's a, a user that always comments about it. And he'll be commenting on this one. If we, he will. we let it slip, if we let that uh, slip. He's our buddy. He's a he is. great guy. Thanks for watching all of our content. Um, <laughs> also want to shout out to Damien Wright for hooking me up with an awesome Commodore 64, 1702 monitor. Yeah, dude, that thing's, I, that thing's great looking. Oh my gosh. I finally have a CRT in my setup. <laughs> so I have an SNES hooked up to it. Uh, Chthonics and I have been playing a crap ton of Mario All Stars on it. Listen to him. No retro achievements. Trying to rust it. Yeah, I know. I know. Just also, a lot of PlayStation. A fuckload. A fuckload of SNES games. Fuck Just load. a shitload. <laughs> um, but what else? Will- <laughs> Look at him. What? What? What else has been going on? Oh, oh. PS5. So I checked out the new PS Plus service. Now they've combined PS Now and PS Plus and added a bunch of back catalog uh-huh. PS1 games. Pass. And it has no, no. They added trophies to the games. I which believe is you. Cool. Pass. It, it works pretty <laughs> well, and they're upscaled. I was playing Tekken Two yesterday for actually like two hours and like unlocking characters, and I'm like, this looks and feels really good mm-hmm. on the PlayStation hardware for some reason. And I was playing Siphon Filter and uh getting achievements and all that and i'm like this is actually pretty good like i'm actually kind of impressed you know there's not that many how, games on the service how is it yet, compared but... to game pass be honest oh i mean it's not there yet you know, as far as the game, pass, <laughs> the game pass stuff because they have yeah they give you a catalog of 
PlayStation games you can stream. It's like yeah. PS Now, but it's been reworked a little bit. I would say it's a yeah. little bit more fluid, but it has a long ways to go. It's a little clunky. They're, um, they're seven years inclusion. behind Game Pass, and they're just they're, they're still not up. there. No, they're not. They'll get no, there. I believe. I'm still to this day a Sony fanboy. I but believe. The real question is, can I stream PS5 to my X18s now? That's the. I mean. That is the real yeah. question. There's so many exclusive <laughs> titles that I want to play, but I can't get my hands on a goddamn console. Mm. Bring them to a streaming service I can rent for, I don't know, 10, 20 bucks a month. Do it Netflix right. style. Just give me access to them to play them somehow. Well, they did. They did now with, with the new service that you can do PC streaming. So all you got to do is load up a browser <clears throat> and you can you can stream uh so check but that not, out i don't it's know it's not ps5 games it's classic games and stuff like that right ps3 games ps2 games it's up to ps4 and i think they're adding mm. ps5 titles i hope so ps4 that's, would that's be amazing the if, they could, if they could finally add the ps4 exclusives on there mm-hmm. i've checked yeah. it a few days ago because uh cone of shame for me but uh my wife was looking at sakura wars and she was so disappointed that it's a playstation 4 exclusive <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yes you gotta pick up a ps4 again Ugh. i no. used to have one i had to sell it when i was in a pinch uh money wise that was years ago and i haven't restocked my sony console since then yeah well let's all fund your ps5 alongside your lineage <laughs> development everybody go to black seraph's patreon which is yes. patreon.com forward slash black seraph all one word subscribe get those sweet firmwares and help fund both development and a heartwarming gaming session on a playstation 5 <laughs> heartwarming <laughs> right praise um so a lot, I, don't know, I don't know who i am now i'm <laughs> dressing in hawaiian shirts and saying praise and shaved head um, cult leader and i've shaved my head i i am they're now the retro handheld cult leader we are starting our own <laughs> cult it is sponsored by retro game core um <laughs> rh con first meet up get your tattoos Blackster. yeah <laughs> <laughs> first step is you got to shave your head oh, man. and buy mm-hmm. hawaiian shirts and also sponsored oh my by god is that see we're joking about this. This, is, this is never going to end now now that it's brought up right like now it's a thing all of our patrons are going to be like oh oh we're getting neck tattoos okay <laughs> oh, i don't god. know man i gotta make use of the video i made the, one the video i made one mention here. of owls having sex on my roof like two months ago and it's still going on all right yeah everybody's talking about owls so seraph's like what are you what are you guys talking about with these owls Dude. yeah i'm just sitting here flabbergasted being like what is going on <laughs> don't worry about it we love our, we love our our age crew it's awesome it's but anyways <laughs> so that's all the things i can think of that are that are coming up as of late you know we got the rgb uh-huh. 20s uh, still that's with its tiger face. Uh, I don't, which see is much adorable. Going on, that thing is adorable, adorable. but you know, it I, doesn't have a Wi-Fi chip in it and they stole right. Arc OS. Right. So we kind of skipped doing a video on it and wasn't that the one that down. actually had the Wi-Fi chip socket in there. Yeah. It has the socket in it, Ah, but they didn't put a and Wi-Fi a, chip in it. They didn't spend the dollar. On the side. Oh yeah. It has a hardware on off switch for the Wi-Fi mm-hmm. for the power circuit. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No chip. <laughs> do Unreal. we know which ship goes in there that's the i mean the 88 21 cu i think will fit yeah yeah it's the real tech the same uh, one for bet, the five i bet you it was a 81 88 fu like the typical mm-hmm. bog of oh, mill yeah, 2.4 gigahertz, 2.4 yeah. gigahertz <laughs> ship <laughs> well they did yeah. they didn't even do that yeah. right but they couldn't <laughs> even bring themselves to put 2.4 gigahertz in it they made sure to advertise that it supports five gigahertz but then they didn't put the right. chip in yeah Unbelievable. it was a bait and switch and i'm still mad about it i, I, I would not be all over again yep yeah not doing it i'm over it uh <laughs> lastly and burnick with uh, a little bit of a surprise. They're releasing this 353P, yeah. which Russ did a video on this morning. We have one on the way, uh, so it'll be interesting to see that. But it has Android on it. It's a dual boot like the 552. So yeah. It has a 4-3 aspect ratio, and it looks like a Super Nintendo controller, much like the S30. Uh, 
Now we are down I, to like three Asnus controller handhelds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One, one exactly. from Kitty. Now we have an Ambonic one and yep. the Me you the guys S30, made one. Right? That's 30, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yep. yep. So, well, you could pick mean, up a bunch. I'm personally at the point now where I'm like, okay, I I understand what Ambernick's doing. They're focused. They're still doing the w- Windows handheld. I think they the five yeah. five two didn't do so hot. Seraph, thank you so much for all your ROMs and stuff for that. By the way, man, you completely turned that thing around for me. Uh, but they're they're focused on some of this lower end stuff still. That's still higher than the thirty three twenty six. So it yeah. seems like what's going on here is that they have the the same chipset that they put in the five hundred two, right? Mm-hmm. It's still in the 353P, uh, mm-hmm. but they've chosen another weird-ass form factor. However, I do appreciate that the shoulder buttons are stacked. Thank God. You meet Finally. It's, the, right? it's their first About one. About damn it's time. Stacked. About time. Finally. It really is. And I'm kind of stoked. It only has two gigs of RAM, so Android's a little clunky on it. But uh, are we going to get lineage? Are you thinking of developing for this one? It's not on the roster at the moment. I have a bunch of handhelds sitting in a drawer. I'm not mm-hmm. making a secret of it. I'm looking at the RG503 and a bunch of other devices. But oh, really? Yeah. I mean, hmm. the pending roster is huge. I have, as I said, a full <laughs> drawer of handhelds that I haven't touched yet because I just can't yeah. get to them. Uh, but yeah, I have a Moki i7 laying around that's on the to-do list. i7s. I've got the RG503 laying in there waiting for its turn. Yeah. Um. Let me suggest skip the mo the, the mochi both of those devices. <laughs> nobody nobody has those in like you know Thor and I don't so like we don't care. But selfishly, <laughs> the five hundred three we do have, and I would love to have that Vita screen with Android and actually oh yeah I, I, to find out if it has a touch capacitor in it to see if we can actually use that for like DS uh, gaming and I'm, all that. I'm pretty sure that was it, that was the very first thing capacity. I saw about. Does it have the touch screen digitizer Does on it? it? Have the because touch. It's a single piece on the Vita. I know it. It's glued together. They wouldn't go to the length of actually disconnecting it, would they? Right. Well, and beyond that, it actually has all of the hardware connections are there. Like I said, when I when I took it apart, I checked a lot of stuff and I pulled up a side diagram of the original Vita teardowns and everything like mm-hmm. that. So it should all be there. I didn't do any trace checking or anything like that. But it, the screen should function. The thing is, is that most Linux developers don't give a shit about touch screen because they don't need it right right so right but ds emulation with <laughs> using the right thumbstick is just garbage town <laughs> <laughs> it's just bad just super bad just bad i can't rest I assured so it's on the roster it's coming okay. it's just a matter of time first i want to revisit awesome. the x18s xd and xd plus so because yeah. those are for, in dire need of XD repair revision. yeah hmm? what's going on with the xd what, what does the xd need the XD just needs a firmware upgrade and a little bit of finicking around with DWRP. The problem okay. with the mm-hmm. XD is, you know, there's multiple methods to install stuff. You can yeah. either go in via mask ROM by having the button combo, toggle it into mask ROM mode, hook it up to a PC, and you flash it that way. There's, of course, also the option to boot via microSD because all of the rock chips can do right. microSD boot, so you can create mm-hmm. and install it that way. And there is, of course, also the option to prepare a DWRP recovery. And then once that image is on there, you can format things around whichever way you like, repartition the device to make room for mm-hmm. bigger operating system updates. Right. The real issue is with the RK3288 that's in the XD, we have a little bit of a partition limitation with mask ROM mode. Normally, you <laughs> give mask ROM a little text file that tells it how to partition the device. Yeah. And yeah. the bootloader of the RK3288 has a 1.5 gigabyte maximum partition size limitation. It probably goes hand in hand with the two gigabyte FAT32 partition limit that used to go around way back then, right? Yeah. It's a guess, I don't know exactly, but if you go beyond 1.5 gigahertz, uh, gigahertz, gigabyte, it will fail to partition via mask ROM. And because that's the only installation method we have for the XD at the moment, we're mm-hmm. kind of stuck with Android 9 simply because of file size limitations. Well, and what, well, what about, about somebody who has like a 16 gig uh, unit? Would would your ROM even work on that? 
Yes, of course. Uh, it's not okay. about the actual eMMC chip. It's about okay. the single partitions. Android is usually split into multiple partitions. There's a system partition holding the operating system, usually a vendor partition holding the drivers and HLs. And then there's some supporting partitions like System X, Product, ODM. Which I was going to ask go. you if the, yeah. if the XD is troubled. Mm, the XD is troubled at this point, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, the so real you get, you get issue a little, will have a little wiggle room in the system partition. <laughs> uh, no, the system partition is already at the 1.5 gigabyte limit. To make oh, Android 9 actually work on the XD, I had to do some serious trimming to make it fit. Yeah. <laughs> I actually had to relocate some of the bigger apps. I'm talking uh, Google Web View and stuff like that into mm -hmm. the vendor partition so that I can squeeze a total of 3 gigabytes out for shared vendor plus system. Gotcha. I had to move files around to make this work. Android 9 literally gets the system down to like five megabytes left in the partition. <laughs> so oh my gosh. some people that install way too many mods via TWRP actually manage to boot loop their device because they go over the file size limitations. Oh no. Yes. Oh god. Oh, man. So the biggest That's issue with XD is actually not the drivers or we could go straight to Android 12 if we wanted. Mm -hmm. It's just wow. getting it to partition something bigger than 1.5 gigabyte per partition. That will only work via TWRP or some SD flash method. Right. Huh. Okay. Even then, that's going to require a whole bunch of custom work just to get that partitioning set up right. It's not as much work as you might think. It's just more how about making this user-friendly? Yeah. Well, not I, for you I can guys. go in via a terminal... Within five minutes, type a few commands, bam, I'm partitioned. I have four gigabytes for my operating system. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, normal people have trouble opening an ADB shell. Yeah, that'd yes. be me. I'm <laughs> yeah. one of those people. Uh, you two lineage devs, you're mad scientists. I love and respect you. Um, I, I never even want to touch that world for myself. I, I'll be a happy end user, though. I will happily play with it. I know ADB commands, though, mm -hmm. some of them. He can get so, that done. Hey. I know for that for a fact. I think uh, I think I'm just shell shocked from uh, all the partition work that I've had to do over the past couple of years just to make stuff work. You know, just rebuilding stuff from scratch. And the Odin was a big one, Seraph. Thank you again for all your help with that, man. Getting, no problem. I, I, I love to, to I love the unlocked locked bootloader. That was great. Yes. So come on, you damn for, for for people who don't know that first iteration of the bootloader on the Odin, they uh, it claimed it was unlocked. It was it was they said it was unlocked, but they purposefully corrupted it so it wasn't the fast boot commands wouldn't work, right? And that was, you know, just a, a security method to keep people from dumping their ROM and everything like that, which we did anyway with uh, a program that we use in Linux, with, which basically hacks the the emergency download process so you can pull everything. QDL, and push everything. yes. QDL, that's right. <laughs> so without getting too far into it, it, it was a whole lot of work. No, and please, it, get into and it. And the, the, stock, the stock ROM thing wouldn't have happened on the Odin if it wasn't for Seraph putting me in the right direction on that one because uh what was it that that you had to do that on me i had to do it for the moki i7s oh, okay, it's, yeah. it's actually sitting on a usb hard drive unused i'm so sorry i couldn't <laughs> get it out yet because i figured there's no use for a recovery package with the stock firmware if there's no replacement <laughs> firmware out yet so <laughs> i kind of laid it to the side and i was like okay when i get down to do the moki i7s i'll put that one out I didn't so get down to it yet. I'm so sorry. <laughs> people will be fine. Again, I don't know how many people have that device. Like 20 in the world? It 30? is extremely hard to come by. Yeah. yeah. I, I've seen it come up in our marketplace every now and again. I'm like, eh, it doesn't have L2R2. <laughs> uh, yeah. I know the performance is awesome. but uh, Performance not... is pretty good. It's one of yeah. those uh, sleeper hits if you're mostly focused on PSP games. <laughs> right. Right. If that's your whole deal. Yeah. The other device for that is going to be the XP or the XP Plus for that nice wide format, uh, yeah. which is another device I've kind of skipped over. Uh, XP Plus, I'm probably not going to get one. Uh, I know it's the, the best Android emulation device on the market now, even better than Odin, but it's so wide and uncomfortable. <laughs> it actually is quite comfortable. Is I only it? have to, I have the it XP, really? I don't have the XP Plus. Uh, the XP is actually extremely comfortable to hold. It's um, the joysticks are so tall, Sarah. I know, but that's what <laughs> makes it great. Uh, what? Yes, I love the huge joysticks on the Steam Deck, for example. 
oh, and okay, that's the yeah. closest thing to it and if you yeah. use a lot of moonlight for streaming where you can actually set the resolution to ultra wide yeah it's actually gorgeous for the pc game streamers that's okay. what it's made for there's a use case yeah mm -hmm. i know but I it's a very know. niche in a niche thing it is i, do I know wish... people who like it they love it I do wish that the Odin joysticks, and I'm not the only one, were a little bit higher, but like mm -hmm. half the height of the Steam Deck joysticks. This is comfortable because it's it's huge. you know it's a brick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's designed to be huge. But with the Odin, I do think that they could maybe use two or three millimeters of height. Would well, you agree with that, Stubbs? I would. Agree. Odin? I'd agree with that. And I actually uh, got some uh, some Joy Cons in. I'm going to swap for some white Joy Cons. So mm -hmm. that's going to that's going to bump up the height just a, enough I feel like to make it more comfortable for first person shooting. You might you might wait for those hall sensors. Those hall sensors, I know. I already have a cooler kit pre-order in for the Steam Ooh. ones. Oh, do you? Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Till then, till then just my Joy-Cons. Yeah. Um, I believe yeah. in you. Yeah. I know you can get it done. Hall sensors, I mean, I guess that stick drift is enough of a, a cry. It doesn't bother people. me. You know? It does bother me a lot. I'm like on my my wife loves Switch games. Okay, she's mm -hmm. a big indie yeah. nut. She she loves yeah. it. Okay, all of those cutesy little games, perfect. Mm -hmm. She goes through Joy Cons like crazy. Oh, does okay? she? I, I oh, think man. I'm on my sixth pair of Joy Cons just oh, because they go God. bad so fast. Bad. <laughs> I will buy a shit ton of those Hall Sensor Joy. Con sticks once they are from Gula Kid. Gula Kid sponsor me. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I will be Kid. your best advertisement, it. man. We love it. Look at that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, Dude, the King Kong like, one. Even if they mm. cut the, the Switch Joy Cons that you go through in half, right? Like, it, that's still worth it. You know? Listen, these L1R1 as well is a delight. The, the chroma is a little bit silly to me, but like, using them is a delight listen are they like omega so omega satisfying. clicky they're omega clicky and they feel wonderful so yeah highly recommend i'm just well, spoiled from yeah. all of those huge analog sticks if i have a yeah. gamepad they have to be huge the only yeah. times i accept <laughs> sunken in analog sticks is when it's a clamshell Give me a clamshell. I accept it it needs to yeah. go somewhere <laughs> sure. right but i get it I understand. if you have candy bar stuff anyway mm -hmm. just give me big analog sticks mm -hmm. it's not and that difficult I, yeah. it well, will what, make my hands happy that's what i hope for the xbox elite controller because they actually have ones that are taller than this one even right they're like stove pipes i mean they're huge you know they yeah. go up like right here but those are way too tall these right here these are awesome though these have a ton of range of motion i feel i actually feel more precise when this thing actually works with windows keep in mind but yeah i don't know maybe yeah. they'll maybe gila kit will put out uh hall sensors for xbox controllers oh they definitely will i think they're <laughs> going to take over the world as far as oh, yeah. uh, controllers go and i'm I okay so. with it because their first controller right out of the gate is perfection i couldn't ask for any changes to it honestly uh that's awesome buttons there's something satisfying about pushing those damn buttons i've played more pc gaming lately because of it uh, and because the of our Monster Hunter tournament going the on. The King Kong controller Star. looks amazing. I don't have one. But yeah, I also look at their other offerings, and I'm looking at their Elf controller, and I'm thinking to myself, who the hell will buy this? <laughs> what is that? What is that? Ghoulie Kit Elf? Yes. They have two controllers on offer from what I saw. One is the Elf, and one is the King Kong one. King mm -hmm. Kong has all of the amazing stuff going for it, the hull sensors and whatever. The Elf looks like a funky copy of a switch gamepad <laughs> i don't know what it that looks is. like it kind of looks like something on? cow kitty would make right yes like a, yes like, that, that's the first this? thing that came to mind what is this <laughs> i'm ordering it right now because I need to know, <laughs> oh god i started something <laughs> what the hell is this it's like a fight pad it's like an arcade pad i i think it's like it looks like for like a, a Saturn? switch or something like yeah. that like a, like you'd use it with the switch i don't know does it have those hull sensors? No, it does not. That's why I said who would buy it. Yeah. What are they doing? No, they, the they even sell your replacement thing. parts for especially that one. <laughs> like you can buy the analogs from it separately, but it's just regular analogs for a switch. I mean, it's yeah. not nothing special about it. They will drift in a week. <laughs> I don't know. Like, 
here's what here's what they do are doing for that controller, which they did for the King Kong as well. They have this nice uh, case that comes with it. You can use to store it. And I love that because it doesn't collect dust. You can have it out in your desk um, and it works well. It's actually pretty and awesome. It's like, it is yeah. awesome. And I was like, this is uh, actually something I didn't know what I wanted, a, yeah. a storage case for my controller. Uh, they have it with this elf one as well. Uh, this is very uh, interesting, though. I wonder how easy that one is. I spent like a decade doing nothing but throwing, a, you know, a 360 controller in a bag, you know? Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's what I love. I have and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you, you know, yeah. you get on a plane, you had a 14 inch screen or whatever. Yeah. You know, you sit there Every with your 360 whatever. controller, swap out batteries, whatever, you know? But yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like there's a, there's been a pretty solid wave of crappy controllers as of late, yes, like maybe the last two or three years. Uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm not happy with the elite controller. I'm not happy mm-hmm. with the switch pro controller, which I know a ton of people love, but that's, it's just not my bag. I'm pretty happy with the dual sense, but that's just because it's weird, you know, because it has, it's weird. Those, yeah. <laughs> well, it has those, the motors in the, the shoulder buttons, which is crazy. That's crazy technology. But you know I why like I like the DualShock stuff? Even so, I don't have one anymore. The touchpad. It reminds me so much about <laughs> Steam with their oh, Steam man. Deck. With their, with their touch. Yeah, yeah I, I, know. I, know. I know every time I had this hooked up to a PC, I was like, thank God I have a mouse pad. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> every time yeah. you're sitting on the couch and you are sit- stuck there with nothing but a gamepad, suddenly a prompt comes up and you're like, how the hell do I click it? every time you sit every down time. to chill and play you need to grab the keyboard and the mouse to click something away every time <laughs> well yeah i mean i i love my my sony controllers <clears throat> i the, the original just dualshock one i think is still my favorite of all time there's just something about that chunk factor they've yeah. never been able to replicate for me uh ps2 is okay ps3 is okay dualshock 4 was fine a little too rounded yeah. and the newest one the dual sense yeah it's uh it's okay it's weird it's funky sometimes i feel like they rely too much on the haptics uh mm. and like the the resistance on the l2 and r2 because playing mm-hmm. call of duty is a grind on it you're like come on <laughs> shoot the gun and you have to like push down with all your might to like get it to click and <laughs> you I'm know like, what this reminds me of me you can turn what? it off think back to the playstation vita when it was at its height you know, mm-hmm. we were like right. two, three weeks in, right? Everyone was raving about it. And they had to show off that they have a fucking pad on the back. Oh, <laughs> every game needs to use it now. They yep. shoehorned yep. this in every game that didn't need it. You know every f- damn game. The worst use of that damn touchpad is when you play a PS1 game on the Vita and it defaults to L2, R2 on the yes. freaking touchpad. Oh. And you're like in Twisted Metal and you're like, eh, eh firing your car's gun you're like this is stupid i hate it what is going on there was one good use for it so uh do you know uh who made those um ah i forgot the name some oem made them those little grips for the playstation vita that added r2 l2 and r3 l3 buttons by pressing on the back yeah the capacitive touch things yeah Yeah. (laughs) that was actually brilliant i remember spending so many hours streaming shit to the PlayStation Vita just because there were no good alternatives back then. Yeah. And you had those really nice grips to give you extra buttons. That was gold weren't, back then. Weren't those things like crazy expensive at the beginning though? Yes. The add-ons for it? Yeah, yes. like just outrageous. They oh got worse. I, I saw one on the used market over here like a, week, a few weeks ago. Those things go for yeah. 100 plus bucks. I don't get it. Oh. You can get the Vita for that. You know yeah. what I mean? Which, by the way, would be an amazing purchase. But a hundred yeah. bucks for the grip? <laughs> I had a grip for the Vita, and yeah, I don't do grips anymore. It's just it's too many damn steps. You know, you gotta like get the thing out, get it out of its case, put the grip on. By that point, I'm taking a nap. Like it's too many steps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already See, half asleep. Whatever, whatever, whatever I, I, I buy an old. OEM handheld, right? Like a a 2ds xl or something like that i'm always like i always have to get like 30 or 40 dollars worth of accessories just so i can find out if they're you don't want them you know oh i know i don't want them in the end like i know 
that I don't want the wrist wrap. I know that I don't want the crystal case. All right. Cause it mm. sucks and it's going to ruin the ergonomics of the handle. Right. But, but I have to find out anyway, I'll send that shit back to Amazon. I'll drive no the 30 problem. minutes it takes to get in town, to take it to the UPS store to send yeah. that crap back. But I got to find out. <laughs> all right. I got to know. You there is one. Know. There is one really useful attachment uh, for the 3ds, by the way, which is that stupid second analog knob. Oh, the little. Oh, yeah. yeah. When they sold that yeah. to you separately, because yeah. some yeah, games were a pain in the ass to play without it. I'm talking to you, Luigi's Mansion too. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, God, that thing gave me cramps. And then wasn't there a, a Monster Hunter game that used that yes. thing exclusively? Oh, my that's God. right. Yeah, Monster Hunter right? needed it, I think. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, okay, Seraph, just... uh, you got the X18S lineage out. I remember you actually uh, remoted into my PC to help me troubleshoot that, or like I was yeah. helping you beta test something. I got to get to the latest version. What's the latest uh, update on the X18S? That, that would be beta number six. Uh, that's a charge controller fix because Pow Kitty put some bad units out that actually had bad charge controllers. There was like. Huh. Two, three hundred units that made it out that were all affected equally, and people couldn't charge them. That was oh, great. Crap. Yeah, that uh, that's fun, and it has that heat uh, dissipation was issue it, as well. Was it just thermal a, paste? Was it a calibration issue, or was it a hardware issue? Uh, it was a broken temperature gauge on the charging IC. So the charging IC always reported. Uh, I think it was two hundred plus Celsius. <laughs> so <laughs> it would be no. melting at that point, but of course it. Well, room temperature, everything's fine. Wow. The latest beta literally just told temperature gauge to shut the fuck up and charge. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you have a new update coming out like today or tomorrow, don't you, though? Uh, that, that's a bit optimistic. That's uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the current stage of things for the X18S is so we have fully working Android 12 locally here. Ooh, but okay. it still needs all of the nitty gritty patches boarded over. You know that okay. the X18S doesn't have the best uh, components. Let's put it that way. They yeah. cheaped out a lot on the analog stick controller board. Not the control, uh, not the analog sticks themselves, but the controller board. Mm -hmm. And right. the controller board triggers wrong analog inputs all the time. It has a whiplash issue that needs to be worked around in software. Otherwise, you, it's impossible to navigate menus with the analog stick because it keeps mm -hmm. whiplashing back. How come we had clamshells perf and their joysticks perfected in 2015? And I don't we get still it. Still in 2022, are getting these clamshells to market <laughs> that are just garbage. But this is the, that's the problem here. I have to port. I think I have 30 patches left to manually port over to Android 12. Once I got all of those done, then we are ready for prime time. Okay. Uh, my guesstimate is, I don't know, another week or two. Then we should be good. I hope cool, to get okay. it out before the month is over so that people that paid for this month's Patreon subscription actually get another goodie out of it. Right. We find ourselves doing that, too. It's like, man, if, if they're paying for the Patreon, we really feel bad waiting too long to release an episode because like, we want you to get your value out of it. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you as a, as a patron of yours that I don't care. Do your thing. You know? <laughs> yeah, Take the time real. to make it right. Uh, I'm not stressing. I know the, that I can go and pick up firmware when I need it. I'm going to I'm going to fanboy here real quick. Uh, the quality of your releases is phenomenal. All right. Yeah. Seriously, where so many people are so used to the garbage tier shit tier crap that Ambernick and PK that that they release as stock firmware, you know, and a lot of people just deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and hope it gets better in the future on another device. But it's it's really appreciated uh, for community developers like yourself to come out and uh, actively make this crap better. And I'm personally happy to happy to subscribe myself as well. Yeah, the X18S is a special case. So like if you're talking uh, tomfoolery and uh, fuck up, then the X18S is the key. <laughs> Uh, it's the it's king. Simple, yeah, it's the king of messed up stuff, but it's so affordable, especially if you buy it used right now, that it's just so hard to pass up. Yeah, yeah, I and, know. and the performance for, for what you're getting mm -hmm. at the price, pure performance wise, that's actually not bad. Okay, if you pick the yeah. thing up used, you can get a really good deal out of it. The well, problem it's is so uncomfortable. 
it's so big and chunky and the buttons you gotta like mod your own like stuff it. you gotta you gotta mod the joysticks yeah, the I biggest know, issue i have with it is the hinge because yeah. fixed position hinges are a big no-go for me yeah. <laughs> i just want to pull that thing all the way up and use it like a regular clamshell mine is modded mm-hmm. by the way i sanded that fucker down <laughs> <laughs> i need to be Good. able to open the screen who the hell's holding it in front of themselves like a notebook nobody does that <laughs> That aside, so the X18S is one of the harder devices to work with simply because of the analog stick controller board. Yeah, that thing that requires. I, I don't want to call it AI learning because that's blowing it out of proportion, but yeah. it requires some very sophisticated filter algorithms on top <laughs> of the controller board, what it reports to the operating system yeah. before I pass that through to whatever game is running. To yeah. actually get semi decent analog stick output. So is it is it just generating garbage inputs, or is it from the the stick like snapping back? No, it's not from the stick. Uh, from the stick at all. It, it has the controller board must have some kind of return to zero issue in their ROM firmware or something somewhere mm-hmm. where I can't access it. So otherwise, I could patch it out, right? But every time you cross the zero boundary. You go, let's say, you press the analog stick all the way up, then you try to go all the way down. At one point or another, you're going to have that zero boundary you're going over. And at that point, the controller sometimes produces whiplash, where you yeah. then have two presses up, one press down, right? Huh. It ping-pongs up and down a few times before it settles at a final value. The way I worked around this in the firmware is that I have a little multi-pass filter going over it it causes a little bit of latency on the analog stick input we're talking mm-hmm. somewhere around 10 milliseconds or something that's enough to filter out all of the variations and it essentially oh. just reports whatever the last semi-decent value was so that we don't get into that ping pong that's an interesting that's, that's an interesting way to tackle that that's madness. Yeah. I remember you talking about that too. You, you're like, we got to write something that looks at the values of the joystick and make sure that they're all correct. Uh, yep. And you spent like a few weeks on that. And uh, and people were putting in Vita sticks and you're like, actually the stock sticks are technically better because the Vita sticks reports less often. Is that right? Uh, the Vita stick reports more often. More often. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's more, that's more garbage generated that's more data going through the controller that's more chances for the controller to fuck up that's pretty (laughs) much what it is Uh, every bit of data that comes in from the analog sticks needs to get processed by the board before it gets handed off to the rest of the operating Mm -hmm. system Mm -hmm. and it seems like more data in means more crap out so it needed more filtering and the algorithm actually had to get adjusted the times had to be adjusted the filter times Mm -hmm. to make sure that both the swapped in Vita sticks will work correctly and the OEM original ones. Hmm. So it was a little bit tricky getting all pieces of hardware to play nice. Thankfully, the algorithm works. It just needs to get ported to Android 12 so that we have it there as well. And after all of the patches, the touchscreen mapper and everything else that people are used to are fully ported to 12, then we can go live with it. Cool. Fantastic. That is That is really cool. And uh, the, have you noticed the D-pad giving you wrong inputs as well? I know on mine, the D-pad's constantly like going left when I mean right. Just the for X18S? a moment, and then it fixes. X18S, yeah. Yes, I did notice that. Uh, the way I fixed it, and this is another shoddy attempt at doing this, um, there, there sadly is no algorithmic way I can filter these out, unlike the analog ah, sticks, okay. because the analog sticks keep reporting so many samples in such a short amount of time that mm-hmm. I can take a mean average and make an educated guess what the value is supposed to be. Yeah. With huh. the D-pad, I don't have that. With the D-pad, I have Boolean values. It's either pressed or it isn't, right? And right. it doesn't keep reporting itself over and over. It reports it when it happens, and then it stops. So there's right. no fix for that. It's just you have to... There is a hardware fix, and that's what I'm getting at. You remember those oh. old GPT XD D-pads? Yeah. Yes. Those yep, actually right fit nearly perfectly in the X18S. Uh, no take, take that thing, uh, the right knob of the D-pad. For yeah. some odd reason, the shell on the X18S ain't straight. It's slightly bent. You don't see it, but that's the case. 
Okay. If you put if you put like two or three very thin layers of tape on the right okay. prong of the T-pad, it balances it out and the weird input disappears. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, uh, really. Uh, yes. That's crazy. Really? That's crazy. How? Number okay, one, you that you figured it out at all. <laughs> all right? That's crazy, dude. You That's have no so idea how much effort. time I spent taking these apart. I, oh, my goodness. I believe you, yeah. uh, to quote Thor. Um, <laughs> Cheeto Steve, what kind of shenanigans? These post-release shenanigans we're finding months later. Cheeto Steve is the guy who works out Pow Kitty who fucks up all their <laughs> handhelds. Um, <laughs> fuck you, man. <laughs> you. all this small stuff oh my goodness so so are you so are you saying that you could take a gpd xd d-pad shim it up with some tape and put it in the 18s and it would be better is that what you're saying yes but you're only allowed to shim the right prong of it just the right the, prong. that's it just the right prong three three pieces of tape regular test of film right should be fine and then it works great it's great. That's crazy. It's, That's crazy. It's just, That's awesome. It's just the top shell. The top shell is slightly bent. The That's left like side I'm, is more compressed than the center. And it's like, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. It's like I'm ordering myself some uh, parts and uh, opening up my <laughs> X18S again. Where do you again, find yeah. GPDXD parts these days? Because PsyOps again is, is down. Where do you find them? I can't find them anywhere. The, the, the no thing way. is, uh, I got mine as well from PsyOps. So right. giving you good advice on where to get these is difficult. <laughs> I, yeah, I know I, I still have a set of spare XD parts because I ordered a huge chunk from him way back. I've got like a drawer full of them. Do you with have win like, two parts? Hmm? <laughs> Do you have win two buttons? I might have one more set, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the eyebrow. I will pay you, I will pay you triple. <laughs> if you feel like shipping those. <laughs> there is one problem with them so they became a victim of an x18s attempt that failed so some of the prongs are broken off no. for two buttons i tried to make them fit but the case is too narrow there's not enough travel to make them fit in there so yeah yeah i had to give up on that i really hoped i could get the amazing win two buttons in there but it was a no-go yeah, I'll still buy them. Um, that, sounds, <laughs> that sounds good, man. It's so hard to find these parts, you know. This is my original love. The XD is such a good handheld, but you got to get those Win 2 buttons and the better membranes in here. Um, and the hinge on the original XD actually wasn't problematic like the XD+. Plus, But it's just such a good product. I don't know why GPD lost their way and, and they haven't made a third revision of this thing. You should have heard the spiel that he gave me to convince me to buy a red XD. Oh my so God. Good. It went on for like, so what, three weeks? Yeah. Minimum until I pulled the trigger on. Until I was fun. So you're like, kept you're sending like, eBay up. links and shit it. like that. At one point, weren't you, didn't you like send me an eBay link and be like, PsyOps is going to buy it if you don't, or something like yeah, that? Or, he does. Yes. Yes. He snatched you know, every blue <laughs> from out from under me for the last three years. I'm every so sorry. One. That's my fault. I <laughs> put him up to it. What? <laughs> oh, finally, well, I was gonna buy a blue one from him, but then then he went off the off the radar, and I'm like, oh, okay. And I saw this one, and I got it before him, and I was like, yes. <laughs> I've Fine. been pestering PsyOps for so long to source me one of those red ones because there was no red one on the European market. I tried no. so hard to get one, impossible. I finally got one through PsyOps, which mm -hmm. I was so thankful for. Amazing little do that. But <laughs> I think I got him started on buying up all the limited edition ones. <laughs> yeah, he does. It's okay. He he, because he always improves on them and then releases them on his store. Uh, I just need him to open his store up again because I'm here and I'll buy your shit. <laughs> um, yeah. So okay, Seraph, we actually haven't asked you like any questions about you. We've been talking just like deep <laughs> specs, which your two lineage devs make it really easy. And I'm, I'm cool with it. And I'm sure our listeners are too, but how are you? <laughs> how are you doing in your soul right now? How's life? You're busy or <laughs> I'm, I'm busy. Yes. The, okay. the big, the big thing with uh Patreon work in general is that 
you need to squeeze it in next to daily life like everyone right. else does here okay right. there's very few of us who actually can do this full time sadly right and i am already in a 60 plus hour job so oh. it's actually kind of difficult to squeeze enough time in to get things done during weekdays i yeah. try to get at least two or three hours in every weekday but with small sections like that it's actually quite difficult to keep things moving especially okay. yeah. lineage dev on board you know compilation times it's a <laughs> yeah. thing all right yeah and i get it especially with devices like the x18s for example who has a mutable file system who has a bootloader that's extremely strict so you can't just yeah. change a few files around to test things you end up compiling stuff flashing stuff mm -hmm. just to test one teeny tiny line of code and it's eight an hour okay yeah it's like that so you have hour like gone. you have like two test runs per weekday that are essentially one-liners that you need to test to see if they work. Uh -huh. And then you need to go to bed because the next morning you have to get up again and do your job. And you're, yeah, you're doing this for your day job and for your custom firmware work, right? Yes, you, I work IT in both sectors. You're doing IT in both sides of things. Mm -hmm. So what do you do while you're waiting for things to build? Because you have this downtime, you either go to bed, right? Or do you <laughs> watch anime? Like, what do you do in your in your downtime? What's your... I work more. Uh, <laughs> of course. Yeah. While it's compiling, my CPU is screaming. My fans are going off like a jet engine. But you can still have some spare CPU grunt left to open a whim to go through <laughs> some text files, well, source this. code. Well, you're on the next like thing. You're sitting okay, there all right. building lineage 18.1 for the 9,000th time that year. You still need to flash <laughs> an SD card for another device and test that yes. while the other one's building. I mean, oh my that's, God. that's standard, right? Yeah, it, it's kind of like that. And when it's not Patreon work, it's just, you know, a random call coming in from my day job boss who's saying, you need to take a look at this. There's an emergency here. And I'm like, all right, all right. You open a remote session, do some server. You take a look, see what's wrong while the other yeah. stuff is compiling well like do you have uh so i know you're married right you mentioned that do you yes. have any kids do you have any other responsibilities you have to balance <laughs> responsibilities yes kids no i essentially have a five head family here to take care of not mm -hmm. kids but wow. parents and siblings yeah and wow yeah there's the property to take care of and there's it's mostly yeah. just regular life stuff yeah I get it. And lineage yeah. are those are your kids, really, on all the devices. <laughs> you nurture them like they are. Your I'm children. actually, I actually can't picture me having kids because I would be so sorry for the kids. <laughs> I, I, I get what? that. Why? Yeah. Like, what? Well, they would be deaf starting two years up. The instant they can walk into the office, the chat engines would would make them deaf. That's one thing. <laughs> <laughs> because you have very loud equipment the running all yes. hours of the day and night that yeah. it's just and when you're in your sleep i imagine you just hear <laughs> thankfully the bedroom is the furthest removed room from the office so it, good. it kind of turns into a silent whiz on the side <laughs> wow and and you hail from austria right yeah so you're you're way out there in that time zone. Um, for some reason, I always thought Germany, but I think Germany and Austria are pretty close to each other, right? Yeah, we're in the same the time geography. Zone. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's pretty cool. I know it seems like, uh, and you're always working crazy hours for both your day job and for your custom firmware stuff. I don't. It's I just, don't. It's impressive. It's impressive. Like I, I'm one of those weirdos that's up at all hours and stuff like that, you know, yes, at 4.30 a.m. Yeah. and things like that. I know, daytime. I know that if I message Seraph about something, I'm going to hear back usually within two hours. Basically guaranteed. It's, it's not <laughs> you're, like... You're not far off. <laughs> yeah, no, like it's it's never like... Like other people, like when I contact Anbernic or Retroid or whoever else, I mean, other developers, even like, you know, Fox or somebody else, like... I know that there's like a 12 hour window that I, I'm going to need to wait before I need to say something again, if it's something that I, I need, need to happen. But at the same time, I'm sitting here at like one o'clock in the morning trying to figure out the Odin partition table, for instance, 
All right. I've messaged like five people and then I messaged Seraph and he immediately gets back to me. He's like, oh, you should check this out. And it's the answer, right? It's the it's the answer. It's, oh it's so sad that I usually am spot on about these things. It just shows <laughs> me that I spent way too much time on this. <laughs> well, You're I for one am on wildly <laughs> grateful for it, to be honest, because, oh my gosh, man, there's just the people don't understand how bad mm -hmm. the documentation is for all these chips and devices and stuff like that. When, yeah. when you're out here, it. yeah, good luck. Good luck. When we were working on the RP two in particular with the MT 6580 chip, uh, man, we were, I mean, page eight, Google stuff, translating from Chinese, you know, just trying to figure I know out exactly what website you mean. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You There's do. the uh, Chinese. Uh, what was it? Stack Exchange website clone, right? Yep. And everybody ends up there that does Android work on these things. Yes. Everybody. Yes. Going through, making sure you hit your Google Translate extension so you can have, you know, a 300-page document that you have to sit there and filter through to find one line of code for this one chipset. It's, it's amazing. Yep. Fantastic. The best thing is the rock chip devices, all of them, okay? I'm talking literally all of them. They all have the same OMX decoder bug. I found a fix for it, thank God, okay? But the mm -hmm. only firmwares out there for Rockchip that have the fix for the goddamn YUV color space issue that Parsec and um, <laughs> Game Pass have on Rockchip devices, my uh -huh. firmware's the only one with a fucking fix in it. I still, <laughs> I still don't know how that slipped past them. They tunnel an unknown flag. When you, when you initialize a decoder for streaming, for YouTube playback, doesn't matter what. Right? Mm -hmm. You have to pick in what way the colors are encoded. Right. Otherwise, the decoder doesn't know what to do with the data. And for some odd reason, Game Pass, Parsec, you guys are special. You tunnel the value zero in there. Give me color type zero. Zero is not what? a valid color type flag. Okay. <laughs> so you're up that's, to that's some OEM specifications. Like, okay, Snapdragon says, okay. Zero, I just assume you mean YUV, right? Regular mm -hmm. color space, whatever. Yeah. Five, six, five pixels. Okay, all good. Uh, Rockchip is like, what the fuck do you want from me? I don't <laughs> know what flag zero is. There is no flag zero for color spaces, and it crashes hard. Parsec doesn't run. Mm -hmm. um, Game Pass doesn't run. It just crashes when it tries to decode shit. So what's I the fix to, upon, upon detecting zero, go to YUV? Yeah. The false yeah. behavior. If you don't know yeah. the flag, just assume it's uh, YUV and you're done. <laughs> <laughs> fixes Parsec, fixes uh, Game Pass. <laughs> Everyone's happy. Oh man! Every device up to the latest 12 firmwares has that issue. <laughs> this has been out since the RK3288 times XD. Okay, oh Android 4.4. Okay, yeah. yeah. Nobody God. fixes this. Dear God. <laughs> They really should hire you over there or something, man. I don't know. Uh, as far as another rock chip device that people are crazy about, of course, is going to be the 552. I don't know if we've talked about that a lot today. Mm -hmm. Anything coming on the horizon for that bad boy? The 552? 552. Well, it just had an mm -hmm. update not too long ago. Yeah, I was going to say. What we, also, I think uh, No Time to Date is also working on something. No Time to Date? Uh, he's working on a 12 ROM, isn't he? Huh. Yeah, I think he was all about trying to boot it off the micro SD card or something. Ooh, that'd be fun. That would be kind of cool. Well, uh, and it's rock chip, so we can definitely do that. So it, yeah. it's possible. Yeah, all you need is a custom U boot. Put it put it in the right spot on the micro SD card, and it should run fine. Cool. And you were saying be, before we started recording how much you love the five five two in the screen. It seems yes, to be your that thing is driver. so gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the out of all the devices like, I, mean, I have here. It's my favorite. So it's I your really favorite retro handheld. Yeah, it is wow. actually at the moment. And I was so surprised because when I first got this, I had it laying right next to my RG351P, right? And that was my little um, anything that isn't demanding pocket sink, right? Mm -hmm. it, that was the one that was always in the pocket nowadays. If I have to go really small, it's usually just some old used handheld piece we go or something. But wow. Yeah. But back then, it was the RG351P, right? Mm -hmm. And I was looking yeah. at this and I was like, damn, that thing is big. 
<laughs> Damn, that thing is wide! Because yeah. I went in with the expectation of, okay, I'm trying to play retro games on this, right? Mm-hmm. right? As it turns out, at the end of the day, I'm actually stretching the boundaries a little bit. I'm playing a few PlayStation 2 games with a little bit of hacking here and there, right? Yeah. I'm streaming stuff from my desktop PC, which can actually run 16x10 resolutions. It's like a miniature Steam Deck at this point, right? <laughs> I actually, is, nice. actually use it a lot for that. And for that, the screen is amazing. I so used it you... almost exclusively for Game Boy Advance. <laughs> yeah, it is beautiful. I know, it's silly. Advance. But yeah. I just, I couldn't help it. Like, the, one of the first things I did was load up Metroid Fusion and play all the way through it on the 5.5.2. I just, I loved Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and the screen's gorgeous. And you can, now you can add in that 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi on it, which I know mm-hmm. people have been doing. The only problem, though, Thanks, is Sarah. anybody... Thank you, Sarah. A- Sarah, have you figured out how to get better battery life out of the thing? Because the thing sucks battery. So the thing fast. sucks battery, but that's down to the RK3399 chip. That thing's yeah. uh, battery sync in general, which is why it's mostly running on breadboards and stuff that have constant yeah. power going in. Another yeah, thing I is, wish- I mm-hmm. found odd things about the RG552, which is sometimes when you stress the CPU more, your battery drain goes down, which makes absolutely no sense. What? But is it- yes, it's, is it-, it has... It has something to do with the regulators. It's what I guess. Okay. Is it the so, regulation, or is it is it distributing the actual processing through? Is it is it threading it differently? No, I think it's got to do with um, some regulators being stuck in a state they shouldn't be in, which would huh. make it a kernel issue, right? Yeah. But it's hard mm-hmm. to debug or when it's in sleep, issue. right? I don't think it's a hardware issue, no, because messing with the regulator settings a bit can Mm -hmm. tweak a 0.25 percent point up or down right so it does have an effect on it it's just trying to dial in the right numbers is difficult the firmware that i'm the firmware that i'm putting out already has the best numbers i could achieve dialed Mm -hmm. in so going beyond that is kind of difficult we're just fighting the chip here so why don't you push the cpu more all the time 24 7 while it's on to get better battery life can you do which that? is what is the firmware what is doing that's what it's yeah. doing okay mm-hmm. interesting as i said i tweaked it as much as i could i nailed it down to about about 1.5 percent battery life per hour standby lost that's where wow, i landed at bad. which is yeah. terrific for rk3399 if you yeah. look at the breadboard communities and the forums People would be killing to get values like this on an RK3399. Yeah. So we are at this point seriously just fighting the chip. Well, I have a question I... for you. Oh, mm-hmm. Go ahead, bud. No, oh, sorry. Thor. Well, okay. So the 552, I, I bought another one recently, and it came with one of your builds on it. I went mm-hmm. to reset. The person left their Google logged in. So I went to reset the thing, and it soft bricked it. Now, this is okay. probably an offline question, but how easy is is it to bring it back from the dead because it just sticks on the bootloader screen extremely and just stays easy there forever. Uh, okay. if we're talking the la- if we're talking the latest builds <laughs> right uh recently i, I, I moved so. away from the mass chrome flashing method because uh, okay. adb and cables and stuff like that confuses people so sure. i tried to make it a little simpler uh Ambonic themselves provides SD flash images, but they require you to use the proprietary rock chip micro SD card creator, okay? Mm-hmm. Which makes it, first of all, bound to Windows. So Mac yeah. users and Linux users have issues. And I figured, okay, I'm going to write myself some deployment scripts and I'm just going to make it produce raw disk images. So yeah, you can use okay. Balena Etcher or some Win32 disk writer or some other imaging mm-hmm. softwares to just flash it to a micro SD card. Nice. And okay. once you do this, you essentially have a universal recovery micro SD card. You stick mm-hmm. that thing into a TF1 and you boot the unit up and it will completely reset it from scratch. You will end up oh, with awesome. latest firmware, like 30 Please. minutes in, then you pop the card out and you're good. That's all. Okay. I'll do that tomorrow. Fantastic, mm-hmm. man. All right. It doesn't I'm get gonna... much easier. I'm going to throw this out there as part of my shit talk lightning round on this one. Um, Fuck OEM chipset tools. All right. (laughs) You're still salty about QDL. 
I, dude, I'm, <laughs> I'm actually a lot better on Q Phil, right? But MediaTek with SP Flash and Rock Chip and whatever the hell Pow Kitty constantly tries to send out. Tools, to tell me that it, yes. That it works on the thing that no Flash is right. Dude, B tools is the worst. What are these? What are they thinking? Why? Why? Why do we have to do this every single time? Dude, every time we, I go to, I go to work on a ROM, right? I feel like I get hit with another tool that I've never seen before. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Which is why I tried to make my software for the X18s not use B tools. It runs mm -hmm. a custom tool that was made for it. It runs on top of fast boot. Okay, it's a little yep. wrapper to. It's essentially a fancy way of running down a hundred commands or something that people mm -hmm. would not be willing to do by hand. Yeah, and it yeah. takes care of everything. It unlocks the bootloader. It generates you a serial number based unlock key. It applies it all. It flashes it all. Right, as long as and this is the big thing that people run into all the time with the X18s. As long as you don't update Matchisk, you're fine. <laughs> every time because the stupid bootloader is so strict <laughs> about its boot images uh -huh. if the signature breaks a single byte changed you're bricked and then it's btools time and btools is a bitch i remember that i remember yes. that was part of your x18s <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. the problem with oh, btools well. is and i still don't know how i figured out that workaround it fails for random reasons mm -hmm. no explanation just failed and i was like all right i'm gonna flash things partition by partition i can deselect them in the menu yeah mm -hmm. i select the first two partitions flashes i select the first three fails right so i was like okay flash the first two first then flash them all in a second run suddenly it works i don't know why <laughs> I, I don't question why but whenever someone runs into a wall with it that's what i tell them oh flash the first two partitions then flash them all that's crazy. Is it? I mean, it's not because it's flashing. Mm. It's not flashing anything important in that first two because it's just reflashing it, right? I don't know why it's doing this. Uh, the, first, <laughs> the first two partitions are the first and second stage bootloader, which would also get flashed if you flash them all. Right. So it has to be some weird ass thing where it needs a power cycle after flashing mm -hmm. the bootloader to mm -hmm. actually load the rest. It's all I can imagine. I can't look into the ROM of the actual chip, so it's yeah. guesswork. Yeah. But you are works. a machine of development <laughs> for these handhelds. I don't know what the community would do without having you around. You know, we only have a number of lineage devs. We have you, no time to date, Turtle, Thor, and I'm probably missing one other one. Mm, who else is there? Else? I think wait a second, it. wait a second, let I me think, open Discord. I think everybody uh, else, else is there. Is. I think everybody else is Linux for the most part on top of that. I mean, part. yeah, yeah. Uh, Futarius is Linux. Yeah. Uh, Fute so, and, and Seb and, and Christian. Yeah, they're all Linux. Yeah. So, so they're, here's they're my a whole, whole lot of people in the, in the Android space. Uh, here's yeah, I think that's all with. of them. So I've, I've loved the collaboration lately with the Android devs and the Linux devs. Um, RP2 plus. We've had a hell of a time getting <laughs> sorts to do lineage on the two plus. I know Turtle and Thor have been working hard at it and they just mm -hmm. were stuck. Is there any, I don't know, I'm being naive here, but is there any like weird hackery we can do to get around if we don't have source? The RP2 plus, that's the one running the Unisoc chip, right? Yes. The Unisoc, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that low end tiger alternative for the X18S, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, I have a bunch of specialized tools ready just for handling Unisoc stuff because it's so <laughs> ah. goddamn tricky. The Unisoc bootloader, I don't know how far you guys are with the RP2+, plus, right? But the Unisoc bootloader on the X18S is tight. Very, very tight. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't let you run anything disabled. You have to pass every check to make it through. That means full AVB2 and everything else that goes with it. Yeah. The signatures need to match up. That also means you're forced to use a mutable file system because the instant someone would change a single file on the operating system, it would no longer boot. Yep. So there's stuff like that. Uh, the essentially, biggest, yeah. The biggest thing thing with the RP2 has been the uh, uh, non-permissive kernel. 
Yeah, so I know Turtle wants. sent me a message because you guys were trying to change the command line and you guys couldn't get it running. I think yeah. at the end he figured out that it was stored in the DDP, right? Mm -hmm. Did you guys get yeah, around? I actually, I, I actually have a build that I need to test today. That's a new build, right. so we'll oh. see how that goes for the 2+. plus. Uh, we've basically been saying in public, you know, because they promised source and then they, they didn't give it and then they said that they, they weren't going to do it. Uh, and so... Uh -huh. That was discouraging, of course. Uh, we've we've done a couple small things in the background, but it it's one of those things where it's like the device works really well as it is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. So we're not going we're not going to break our backs on it when there's other things that we can be getting done. That's also true. So. Yeah, I can and tell I you a few was. tricks if you're stuck with a closed source kernel. So uh, the very first thing you always check is if the kernel has loadable modules enabled. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know if the RP2 Plus does, but if it does, there's multiple <laughs> ways to get around it. Either no. you can gener you can generate yourself a model.simverse file from the binary kernel. There are scripts mm -hmm. for that. You will find some on GitHub. They are outdated, but I have a fixed one if you guys need it. Yeah, I know no, I had to work maybe. that for the RG552. And uh -huh. If that's not an option, there's an even simpler trick, but that requires you to be able to have unsigned boot images. If you can do that with the bootloader, then you can just binary patch the kernel because all the okay. signature checks inside the kernel module loading algorithm boils uh -huh. down to a single function in the kernel. You can literally open up IDA or Gydra or whatever reverse engineering tool you're using and make that single function return the value. Every signature is valid. Everything's good. And then just grab yourself a random, similar enough donor kernel. If you're right. trying to get uh, Unisoc stuff going, check the Galaxy A9, I think. That's okay. running on a Unisoc as well, and it's open source. Uh, wow. Check the kernel out. Okay. Pick whatever kernel module you need compiled. And use that donor kernel to compile the kernel module. In combination with the patched pre-built kernel, you will be loading it up just fine. And then you can go from there. You can even do some memory region unlocking and then patch the kernel up in case there's a few bugs in the pre-built kernel uh -huh. there's tricks like that this is also how we got all of those fancy new that's wi-fi a, and bluetooth drivers running on the right, rg 552 that's, that's a lot of that's a lot of wiggling around geez oh pete uh, it's not as much work as it sounds the Patching in the kernel is literally a five-minute job. Listen, listen to him. Listen to him. It's not, it's a, it's not as Eat bad as my, you think it's going to be. I mean, I eat that with my Frosted Flicks in the morning. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and... You're a champion, bro. Jeez. I'm sorry. <laughs> i probably make it sound too easy. Never be sorry for who you are. Um, oh, these man. might be some of, the, some of the tricks that we needed to, uh, to get going on that. Because again, like Thor was saying, we don't need to release lineage on the, on the 2 Plus because the stock option is pretty good. But mm -hmm. also, what's really going on with some of those stock apps? Well, it'd be nice to rip some of that stuff out of there and have a really clean ROM. The one thing that really kills me is looking into the Embonic stuff, uh, stock software with their button mapper especially. Nothing wrong yeah. with their button mapper on the kernel side. Okay, mm -hmm. That's, there's there's a clean break off in the middle. Okay, There is a kernel interface that has all the configurations. You tunnel them in. You say where you want the button to click on the screen, how big mm -hmm. it's got to be, whatever. Right, All of those parameters, you dump into the kernel. And the kernel then toggles the thing into the right mode, and you're good. But the problem here is their user interface, for some goddamn reason, and I don't understand why, the user interface needs phone permission, location permission. Uh -huh. their, their GUI mapping interface requires you to have root rights, which, by the way, they don't even give to other apps. They just give it to their button mapper software, <laughs> which I do not understand because the SysFS nodes are world writable. They don't need root permission so to access so those. Did they, did they give it a custom root or did they put it in priv app? Uh, they put a custom root binary in, just a patched SU binary that gives the button mapper app oh root gosh. permission so that everything else can go well. Flowery That's language. Crazy. No, no, no. That's crazy. Oh, well. So we've talked a lot about the 552. We've talked about some of the trials and tribulations. Let's talk about the future a little bit. Um, All right. I have some I have some pretty big hopes in the future, in the near future, for 3588 and Dimensity 1200 devices. What do you guys think about future chipsets here? 
well, the media tech line is great. Okay. Yeah. There were times where I was actually a big opponent of media tech devices talking yeah. XD plus, but that's because I'm a little salty with the MT817 array. That mm-hmm. one is a pain in the ass to work with, which is also why the XD plus is definitely the hardest device to work on that I have on the roster. But the newer devices are great. I look at the chipsets. Yes, they are still a little kernel nightmare, but they work. They work great. Yeah. You get good performance. You get good performance for a decent price. And yeah. if you compare that to a Snapdragon, I don't know. If you wanted to be in the same price ballpark, where would you end up? Snapdragon 855, 845? As a That's manufacturer, if you're buying it in. Yeah. yeah. So if you have the choice between a several generation old Snapdragon or the newer MediaTek offerings, I would definitely go with the MediaTek offerings because yeah. you're getting a huge grunt of CPU and GPU horsepower for pretty much the same price. Well, it's, just a, it's just a matter of it's, putting it in the right shell. And right. the more power efficient transistor yeah. process with seven and eight nanometer processes. Yeah, because yeah. come on, we just talked about the RG552 with the RK3399. That thing yeah. sucks battery. Make those things smaller, make them more power mm-hmm. efficient. And yeah. for handhelds, that's great. You're no longer fighting the battery. Yeah. Yeah. In like Odin Light, Odin Light is on the Dimensity, what, D900C? Yeah. Um, 900, yeah, that's right. Uh, that thing's like a six nanom- nanometer process on that one. Is it six and or seven? Maybe it's seven. Either way, it's tiny, and for the pricing of that handheld, that's going to be mm-hmm. so beautiful. We're right around the corner of trying that thing out, by the way. Uh, it should ship any time now, so I'm very excited to see what where we can take it. Uh, of course, there the was even... uh, drivers for it are a little behind, though, right? They're not optimized yet because it's such a new chip. Yeah. Well, there was even talk at a certain point about uh, that chip not maybe even needing the active cooling uh, solution that the Odin Pro has because mm-hmm. of how much right. more efficient it is. So Right. I'm, I mean, I'm the SD845 doesn't need active cooling anyway, but it has such a huge overclocking potential if you do give it that. Yeah. Oh yeah, with with the yeah. overclocking on it, it it gets it gets nice and warm for sure. On mm-hmm. the Odin. But if it, it wasn't overclocked, I wouldn't I wouldn't think that it would need it. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I'm one of those sickos that's been playing Diablo Immortal, so it's not like I've been you know trashing oh. the CPU. So I know, I know, I know. That's why this game, Sir X3, the fan <laughs> is nice to have for Diablo oh. Immortal. But but. You can't use it again unless it's plugged in. So what a useless, <laughs> what a useless accessory this is! I can't Does even it have believe pass it. Man. Charging? No, yeah. it no, doesn't. it doesn't. Have what? What? No! Holy no. crap! Are you serious? I thought I I'm thought that was serious. the whole point of it. I thought that was the point of it. You plug external power in, you get your active cooling, and maybe it charges the device because that's the big issue you have that's with awful. phones. You clamp them in, the battery goes down. No, no, no. You have to plug in just to power the fan. That's all this does is it powers the fan, not the phone. I even thought, okay, okay, I'm going to drain battery and I'm going to plug the fan into the phone um, just to see if that works. So I plugged the fan into the other port. Mm -hmm. Nothing doesn't power the fan. The, The fan needs its own separate like two amp power source separate from this. So you need Uh, two wires to run that thing. Yes. And That's I guess insane. you could put like you could put like an anchor power bank onto the back or something oh. and then plug it into that. Oh, okay, now right, we're going yeah. Singiverse 3D printing. Go. Yeah. Wonderful. Might as well get it's a Steam Deck really, at that point. Shit. It's already yeah. really, really thick and tall. This is a huge, wide game, sir. Oh, and, um, and let's also keep in mind no analog triggers. Okay. So no analog triggers. Let's keep that it's in true. Mind. That's true. It's uh, it's a step backwards for me. I'm not I'm not a huge fan of it. But talking uh, about PC, analog I'm triggers, hoping. by the way, talking about analog triggers with those clip on game pads, I was so disappointed with the um, God, what was the name of it? The Nacon offerings, you know those? No, no. What no? is that? Google it real quick. N a c o n, uh, M G minus X. Nakon Gaming. Mm-hmm. It's this really weird niche OEM that makes gamepads. 
Uh -huh. And I got a hundred bucks in trying to see what what the fuss was about, right? I got myself one of those MG minus X gamepads, and mm -hmm. to be honest, the face buttons, the D-pad, all good, all good. The triggers, analog triggers in the back, they are like sponges, okay? Oh, you, you know when you have a yeah. rubber band that's about to bust, okay? Yeah. And you have to push it so hard just to make it move? That's the analog triggers. That oh. thing would have been gold if it wasn't what? for those analog trigger buttons. It. How do you spell it? What is it? N-A-C-O-N gaming.com. Oh, Try those. Okay. Yeah. Damn, dude. This is pretty cool oh, looking yeah. too because it looks like a maybe like a Switch Pro or Xbox controller. It looks interesting. Yeah. It's actually it's great if you thing. don't need R2 and L2 <laughs> because those buttons are horrible. <laughs> which is so which made me so sad because this was the Android answer to the Backbone controller before the oh, Backbone controller I got would... their Android build out. Wait, Backbone doesn't have an Android out yet, do they? They have it for pre-order. Yeah. It's up for pre-order right oh, now. Oh, it's for pre-order. Okay. Yeah, it's coming well, out in a few months. I'll be pre-ordering uh, gonna... that real quick here. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> you know what the big issue with the uh, Backbone controller for me is? First of all, price. Uh, second of all. Mm. I personally am, as I told before, a very busy man because I have a 60-hour job plus all the other stuff on the side. I mostly live on my phone, mm -hmm. as yeah. in I replied to several bosses, co-workers, etc. on that video right. conferencing and whatnot else. And for that, I actually have a used Fold 2, which is my daily driver for this kind uh -huh. of stuff, right? It got. It was fairly cheap after the Fold 3 got out, right? Everyone was trying to get rid of it. I figured I would try it. And for this kind of stuff, productivity, it's great. And if I was to get one of those controllers, right, mm -hmm. it would probably get used with the Fold 2. Now look at the placement of the Type-C port on the Fold 2 and line it up with the backbone. Impossible not, to use. Not to get it. I heard that complaint with the with the Kishi V2 as well. Yes, it, people uh, are cutting portable. parts off to make it fit. Oh, it's I ridiculous. Know. Well, I, I did that with the Kishi V1 where I had to pull parts off of it to make my Pixel 4 XL yeah. fit because it was so big. And then or it was, the then it was it, yeah. floppy. Like... Yeah, the it was floppiness. Floppy. <laughs> that was floppy. And it's garbage, yeah. and I got rid of it. Um, and I do have to correct myself, by the way. There is pass-through charging on the game server, so but you, you can still... charge the phone. But you can't use the fan. So you still, still need two cables. Yeah. Two you cables. still need two cables. Yeah, yeah. no. Which no. defeats yeah. the purpose. Why? Yeah. That extra electro ele electronical part in there to get that two amps, five volt mm. out for the fan. What mm. would that have cost? Nothing. It's it's ridiculous, let's, and I I have no idea. This Nacon just, looks interesting though. It's just a little wide. Let's just be honest. Here, Are you looking at, at the MGX Pro, right? Yeah. That the Playdate is the perfect handheld now. All right, it it runs Android. <laughs> it... <laughs> well, we never got your thoughts on it. What, what do you on what the do you think about it? At all? Yeah. Oh, it's cute. I mean, it's yeah, exactly. It's super, it's it's, it's, it's super duper niche. Don't buy it if you if you don't instantly love it, just the concept of it, you know? It's the device I would that's buy it. to give to my brother as a birthday gag gift. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah, the device like, I would buy. A, that's an but the thing is, is that but the thing is is that he would he would eventually love it. Like once you have it in your hands, right? Like it's it's really cute. It's really small. It's got the USB C charging, it charges real quick. It's great, right? Let's but let's be honest. We are all have to addicts wait. here, right? Yeah. We are just hoarding handhelds after handhelds, right? And oh, yeah. we don't buy them because we need them, okay? We no. buy them because we like them, yes. okay? It's a little niche of a niche of a niche, and there's just something in our head that clicks, and we like the weird stuff. It's yeah. just the way yeah. it is. I, I look at the plate and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, okay. I could see how that fits in my portfolio, right? <laughs> <laughs> and in everyone my, else. My rainbow of handhelds. Yeah, exactly. And if you tell anyone on the street about this, you're just going to get those really weird looks. You know, <laughs> as you walk down the street and the eyes just follow you. Crank yeah, it. like bro, that. Crank it, bro. Look at me go. It. You know, walking, <laughs> uh, sitting on the subway, mm. cranking away. <laughs> 
at full volume. I can because, totally see that up. By the way, the speakers on this damn thing are, are loud. loud. Holy crap, they're but, loud. So if you're on the has, subway playing a game with like a bird going, ah! as you cranked it right people would think you're the weirdest fucking human being on the planet all right ah, ah, you know? okay but let's let's spin it to the extreme opposite okay you're you're in the subway with the okay. steam deck right with the steam deck yeah all right decked let's yeah go. <laughs> and now imagine with a 3d printed singing my chick on the back right. of a battery bank dude they've people are already there like they've got the like ten thousand milliamp hour batteries and somebody was asking me about like a 26 26 950 attachment like a 2000 or twenty six thousand nine hundred fifty milliamp hour battery attachment for this thing I like, like, to, to, I wait, so it can weigh 10 pounds what's the steam clip you? the steam yeah. clip that's right I, yeah but the thing about the Steam Deck, though, right, is that you can't like you can't have earbuds in. You have to have the full headset on the subway, like playing Hitman Three or or Elden Ring, just so people know that you're a real yeah. gamer. All right. Now the real question is, out of those two, what makes somewhere? What turns more heads, the play date or the Steam Deck oh. with the clip on? I think I think people like most people who aren't gamers would assume this is some kind of Nintendo still, honestly. Right. Yeah. Because they have no idea. Switch I Pro. think if I think if people saw this, they would just be like, what the fuck is he doing? What is <laughs> that? They, they probably think you're a homeless person who got that as a McDonald's Happy Meal toy. When you well, were here's the other oh, thing yeah. too. That could oh, totally yeah. fit the color scheme too. Absolutely, because it's <laughs> it only comes in purple and yellow and it has this stupid yeah. little crank on the side, right? Yeah. So people think you're it doesn't work to power it up. There's no generator in here. Okay. They're probably gonna give uh, money to you. So you like, oh, crank it on this so bastard. People people probably think it's like a little flashlight or something like that. No, sir. <laughs> it's an Android based video game console. Thank you very much. All right. They really should have made it so you can so you can power it though by cranking it. So you can like generate power i hate i it drives me crazy there's no backlight so you got to play it in the daylight or with uh -huh. a lamp on oh what and there's no backlight also, on that no there's no backlight you no. have to get the perfect angle and you have to have a light on it at all times it's some kind um, of hybrid i forget chush knows all the details on it. it's some yeah, kind of hybrid does. e ink lcd right so right. Backlight, Wait, e -ink? Does, what's the refresh rate on that? that i don't know it's i don't know it's fast though it is, it is. It's the nicest like e ink type display I've ever seen. And Chush yeah. will say it's not e ink. It's blah 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 blah. Yeah. And I'm like, Chush, calm down. So it's it's nice and fast. It's definitely fast enough to play video games on. It is fast to play video games. And there's some, actually some really fun games that have been released on this. Um, a lot of them are third party. Like you can make your own games. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of indie stuff out there. Uh, Here's what drives me crazy. And this is why we need lineage is that you can't power it off. You cannot <laughs> power it off. No, there is no off. There's no way to turn it off. You can let the battery die. That's the only way to turn it off. Yeah. No, really? Correct. Really? Yes. Yeah. We tried. We had oh, a whole yeah. live stream. We looked it up. Uh, I've tried in the week since. There is no way to turn this okay, device okay. off. Um, have you tried? Do we have A to B access? Any kind of A to B? I, dude, I haven't even tried. Like, I tell you what. Let me plug this son of a bitch in real quick. <laughs> I want to know if it has a power off command. Try powering it off. I don't know, dude. I don't. I don't right. think we can. I don't think you can turn it off. I just don't think that that's an available option on this thing. Yeah, even I with ADB, I bet you it can. There's always a power off command, something to shut it off. Mm -hmm. It's a Linux device. It, at I the mean, core. it is. There's a sure. restart option. There is. System update. No, that wouldn't be it. I mean, I just let the battery die down to turn it <laughs> off for me. It would, but it takes like a week for that to happen because the it's a small battery, it but it, it's very power it efficient. Is. So. What a quirky little device. OK, so let's wrap up here. Um, Sarah, you have a, a number of places people can find you at. Uh, the main one I, I'm guessing you probably want to promote is going to be your Patreon, right? Well, obviously, that's <laughs> yeah. the one that pays the bills. Um, but I'm also available on Twitter mostly, where I try to be as open as I can. Okay, I yeah. always make sure that they are synchronized and that if something is going on on one end, people on the other end know as well. Mm -hmm. 
I only just unlocked um, the community tab on YouTube, which, cool. yeah, I'm not a big YouTube person. Okay. I don't do a lot of video recordings or something. I'm mostly not having enough time to do so, but I try to keep that one in sync as well now, at least from this point on forward. But okay. other than that, on there. there's not much else where you can find me. My hub page on black-serif.com, where there's always links to the latest builds for every device, and the Patreon, of course, and Twitter. And for people who want to find you there, uh, your Twitter is going to be at Team Black Serif, all one word, Team Black Serif. Yes. Uh, Patreon is just a forward slash Black Serif, and your YouTube doesn't have a does it have a custom channel name yet? Um. <laughs> That's a good question, actually. Slash Black Seraph as well, just like your Patreon. Cool. Uh, which by the way, we subscribe- there are there are social media links on the hub page, so awesome. If people really have trouble finding them, well, we'll make sure. Yeah, and you have a link tree. Ooh. Yes. The link tree. But that's right. the hub page on blackmanaserif.com. It's a forwarder to a link tree that's always kept up to date. Cool. Black black dash or black minus serif .com. Okay. Especially with Patreon being the organizational nightmare that it is. And the way the tag system never quite works right there. <laughs> it was necessary to supplement it with a link yeah. tree. Otherwise, people have trouble finding the latest builds. Wow, you're doing pretty damn well in here right now. <laughs> Almost four grand a month. People love your shit. Um, Let's be real. It's, it's fucking worth it. I mean... Have you guys picked up a 552 it. lately yeah. and not and had a stock ROM on it? Come on. Okay. No, come on. For shit's come sake. Come on. Get out of here. God. I'm al I'm already pissed whenever I have a stock RG552 and I can't use my Bluetooth headphones. <laughs> that you get chip this? update it, is necessary. Is. Where did you get this artwork at the top of your Patreon? This is new with the XD in the background. That's really mm -hmm. cool. Uh, that was donated by an artist. Lap, Lapins, suppose can't read their name. That's really cool. Uh, that is, that is really beautiful. Um, I can't draw for the love of God. Okay. <laughs> so I was already happy to get cool. stuff donated. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. And I know sometimes people donate handhelds to you. Uh, God, and there, we probably won't get into this in the podcast, but there was that drama with, uh, J support, uh, Dream oh, Master. Yeah. <laughs> Dream Master on, is a special oh, kind of person. Yes, he is. I saw that on Twitter. He was like, I gave you everything. You know, I, I, <laughs> I donated and I'm the reason why you have one exists. of my kidneys. You know? Yeah. And, the and best like, thing was he had a hundred dollar in donation for a week <laughs> before <laughs> he got it refunded he, because he was already such a, Oh my yeah. God. Refunded. Yes. I I had those hundred dollars for a week, and what? he was he was already problematic what? back then. So that's amazing. <laughs> it what? was the bad idea to just refund that's it. That's amazing. On his on his Discord, it even says like you know we're Dream Esper, the sponsors behind Lineage for the X XD yeah. and Clean ROM, and it's like what? <laughs> just want to throw it out there, everybody. Don't buy from Dream Esper. They are a scam, and they scammed me for a PS5 in December. That's true. Which I wasn't chill about. Well, and then I got my money back. Then they got banned, and then ban evaded, and then like had a shit fit. So had yeah. <laughs> so just bad, just bad. You know, you try to get people to benefit of the doubt, and sometimes they are just shit people. <laughs> the problem is, you try to be understanding. Okay, maybe yeah. someone can turn a new leaf, but after three or four attempts, you're like, yeah. okay. Yeah, no. Got no, burned a few no. times. Uh, enough. So that was my shit talk lightning round. Any other <laughs> uh, <laughs> complaints? The I, have, I have one other one. Uh, GPD, <laughs> quit being fucking awful and make an XD successor, please. With a with a second screen, please. Oh, please make it. Yes. Please make an Android DS, please. Yes, that yes, would be yes, so yes. amazing. Ah, uh, awesome. Everyone's been asking for it. Have yeah. you checked the GPD subreddit? Everybody, yeah. every time a new advertisement post in broken English comes uh -huh. out, the first reply, the top voted post is always, oh, when is the GPD Win 2 refresh coming? When do we get a GPD yeah. XD? Yeah. And everyone's yeah. like, 
yeah, upward, 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 and their posts barely hit like five upwards <laughs> with the advertisements. It's like, uh. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, I'm it's still, yeah, we're making it so easy for them. Okay, we we yeah. tell them exactly how to make money. Yep. Okay, exactly make this. Make we money. pay for it. We'll pay you all of our money. <laughs> honestly, it's fine. Honestly, if they gave it. If they, they gave it the dimensity treatment, they put like what's going to go in the light or maybe even something a little bit better in it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Dual screen. I mean, literally just keep it the XD, but put in some some clicks. All right. Put in some L, L3, R3. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would yes. pay. Yes. That's all we want. I would pay $200 for it easily. Sure. Easy. If not, if not a little easy. bit more, but I would easily pay $200 for yeah. it. Uh, and I got to say, I'm salty about the RGB 20S still and its lack of Wi-Fi and, it's, and the lies and the lies. The lies. <laughs> the lies. It te- it, I was so mad about it that. Technically, wasn't but a it lie. is damn cute. Technically, it says technically. Wi-Fi compatible in the like little supported. writing on their advertising. Supported, supported. Yeah. supported. <laughs> supported. Uh, if you sold a chip in, sure. Good luck figuring out which chip, because if the kernel doesn't have the right module in it, you're still screwed. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do do we actually have the kernel source code for that? Yeah, because it's thirty three twenty six. Um, yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It's your standard, you know. So we're which by Arc the way, OS shout runs out on. to our future episode. <laughs> ArcOS does run on it. They stole it and shipped out yes, with it did. against. They they didn't didn't ask well, then it's not that, that they didn't talk to Christian just at ship all. a few extra Wi-Fi drivers. Yeah. Well, there. I mean, you know how that goes. People have shipped handhelds with your uh, with your proprietary uh, lineage oh, no. builds on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like it doesn't feel good. It's like no, no, no. I prefer they at least say ask something. Me, you know, say anything. Say Look, something. I'm not Credit. making this extremely complicated. Uh, if you take Dragon Box Shop for example, right? It's yeah. a it's the go to German place over here if you want those handhelds, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, extremely reliable, fast shipping, everything, all good, right? Mm-hmm. I actually, know the shop owner, and. He literally just came up, hey, can I ship this? You know, uh, I will give you a little, you know, tip here and there, right? I was like, yeah, sure. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Just ask, okay? <laughs> it's not that difficult. Yeah, something. Just ask. Well, and, and Christian, from what I could tell, he's a, he's a pretty laid back guy. You know, I don't think he would have been like upset or anything, but damn, they should have asked. <laughs> Holy crap, and, they should have asked. And now he's he's kind of strapped with supporting yeah. that and they released an older build, you know, which is going to have bugs and they're going to be like, yeah, how do we fix this? And he's like, okay, what, what do you have loaded on there? What build of mine is running on that? What sort of bastardized <laughs> work is running? <laughs> oh man. No, so, well. All right, well, guys. Seraph, dude, thank you so much for coming on it. I've had a really good time talking with you, man. Jeez. OP. This is a good episode. Me too. Yeah, me too. What's a pleasure. I don't think- I don't think anybody's like heard your voice before either. So this, oh, will be, yeah. this will be a treat for folks to listen oh, and yeah. wow. get to know you <laughs> and learn all of this nerdery tech stuff, which I partially understand. I don't know all the stuff it's you guys the nerd talk about. Year. It's awesome. Yeah, it is. So this is <laughs> so we're gonna keep it going. Like I like I, he has to stop me from going hard on this stuff. So I'm sorry, I know, you know. You, you're both. I, I'm standing back and letting the show happen. I'm like, oh, this is. Oh God, words. this would this would be a three hour nerd talk. <laughs> oh yeah, Easily. we could oh, keep yeah. going, but and then editing would be a nightmare. Because <laughs> uh, stuff does the audio editing, right? I'm not editing shit. Yeah. Like no way. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. I really, I really appreciate you both, uh, patrons of both Black Seraph and for RH. Thank you all. Uh, for allowing us to continue doing what we love and uh, we'll keep doing it. We have an ultimate 3326 shootout episode coming yeah. up with Russ. Uh, that'll be a lot of Is Scott fun. joining us for that. Uh, I'm going to ask. So I want to confirm with Scott if he's, if he's joining us, maybe, maybe we'll have uh, the four of us. We could, we could maybe have a mod. Uh, be... I can't contribute too much for that because I simply don't have enough. We <laughs> have okay. them all. Don't worry. We have them all. We, we, we got enough to cover for maybe we can the only thing i can contribute to that is maybe this 351p and 351v that's the oh, only one i have laying the around v's, the v is my favorite spoiler alert yeah oh yeah the we's yeah. gold yeah uh, we want to put out a, a survey first to get every, to get the community's votes on it and then we'll kind of reveal yeah, the and then i'm just going to take a big well. crap on it and just be like no your favorite device is awful. no you're wrong, you're wrong. <laughs> no here's what Did we you say, say. Oh, we'll give the community lame <laughs> Lame. We'll give the community's <laughs> vote voted number one and then our number ones. 
Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to that. And we'll keep bringing these episodes. Next up is going to be Oasis Digital mm-hmm. uh, is coming up at the beginning of July for a guest. And then actually Mr. Sujano, uh, July 18th. So uh, both of those guys are great in their coverage of handhelds. Yep. And it'll be interesting to hear their, their takes on stuff. Uh, and Thor and I will try to fit in a couple live casts in between with uh, the 353 coming out and yep. all that and the Odin light. I'm going to do a teardown on but, that 353, uh, thank- just so you know. Got to do a teardown. We got to see why is that thing so damn big when it doesn't need Same. to be just like the damn She's 503. Thick. Why did it have those like boobs on the back too? It, it does. Rubber boobs. Ugh. It is. It's not uh, as bad as the Game Force Hulk nipples though. Keep that in mind. So No, not not as bad <laughs> but with that everybody thank you for joining us for the <laughs> retro handles podcast we will see you on the next one this has been Stubbs and thor thor and Black Black Sarah. Sarah Roof. Mm. thanks again buddy we had a really good time thank you guys no problem you're welcome bye yeah <laughs>